my little sugar bookers, welcome back to the channel. I am so freaking excited to finally get around to doing this video for you guys. So one of my biggest ways I love to give back is to show you guys as creators, as simmers, as YouTubers even, or just people in general, if you're into graphics designing, um, kind of how I go about things. The one thing you need to know about me is I am basically not really a lazy person when it comes to graphics designing, but if there's an easier way to do something, I like to just jump straight to the chase. Hence why for my intros and stuff like that, I really don't use any super duper fancy dancy programs. I literally use Sony Vegas and Photoshop CC. Like that is all that I use. So hopefully in this thumbnail kind of tips and tricks tutorial video, um, you will be able to gather some tools that will help aid you in creating your thumbnails and even possibly developing your own personal style. Um, if you don't have a personal style yet, don't worry, it took me four years to find mine, and these are things that are ever-changing. They're never going to stay the same. So this isn't a tutorial on how to copy my thumbnails or my thumbnail style, but it's more or less just kind of like a tips and tricks video, and I will be going through how I do make my thumbnails, but I'll also be kind of censoring out some of the um, very, very top secret, uh, how do you say, formulations that make my thumbnails what they are, I guess. So, okay, let's just go start out with the very, 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 very basics here. The most important thing that you're going to need is a Photoshop program of some type. Now, in this tutorial, we are going to be using the ever wonderful Adobe Photoshop CC. You can also um, do a subscription do service. You could also buy it outright. Um, if you don't want to do any of that and you would like to go ahead and get something for free, you can always go and download the GIMP. I just hit the microphone, but the GIMP. <laughs> um, I do talk with my hands if you don't know, so you know, just bear with me here. But um, this program is very similar uh, to Adobe Photoshop CC, but it's obviously free. Um, I do plan in on the future doing a um, tutorial on using the GIMP, but I actually need to familiarize myself a little bit more with it before I can. But in case you guys are interesting, I do believe some of these techniques are very similar um, and hopefully you'll you know you'll at least you'll know where you can start in terms of um, program wise uh, let's see all right so what we need to do now is we need to go ahead and start creating our thumbnail so here I have like a whole bunch of other things that I was I don't know just looking at this is actually Jean's thumbnail here um, we're gonna go ahead and zoom in so that we're at hundred percent on the layer spectrum. So we are just going to, just for um, tutorial sake, we are gonna start a new project. So your your sizing is going to need to be a 480 by 269. And you're gonna go ahead and click OK. Make sure that's RB, RGB color. Sometimes it gets put into uh, grayscale. I don't know why, but um, basically for stats look like that, you're good to go. Image size is 378 point K. And you're going to click OK. So next, what we are going to go ahead and do is we are going to start off with our new um, our new thumbnail. Keep in mind that thumbnails um, on the computer look a lot larger than they do on the phone. On the phone, a thumbnail will look just about like this, okay? So this is hence why I do a very clean, um, a very clean thumbnail is because if I had text, if I had a whole bunch of details, if I had a whole bunch of shenanigans going on, honestly, at that point, your, your, um, thumbnail looks very, very muddled. So if just, just a little, little food for thought, I believe less is more. If you are going to use a big font, make sure that it's big, it's concise. It's usually, you know, maybe one to three words max, nothing too crazy. The fonts are very bold and clear. We'll get into that in just a little bit, but, um, that's kind of where my simplicity comes into play. So when you, um, start off with a just fresh slate, clean canvas, you are going to notice that your background is locked. Every single time you add something to your, your thumbnail, make sure that you hit this button down here and it looks like a little page and it says create new layer. So basically if I was to go ahead and let's just, you know, do something seriously freaking random here. Um, if I was to go ahead and just kind of draw on this, blah, 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 um, I can actually just hit the delete button and it's gone. Do you see what I'm saying? As to where if I was just to add everything and everything and everything to my background layer, um, you know, I can't, 
I can't really delete it because it's attached. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and do the um, undo brush tool button a few times so that we can get, get back to a, a clean slate here. All right, so next we're going to go ahead and talk about one of my biggest tools. The things that I feel like help me the most is color wheels. If you guys notice on my channel, I really do and have been recently experimenting with colors. If I have, um, you know, a blue background, I'm going to definitely look to um, what pops or what stands out next to a blue background. And as you can see, the colors that are kind of a little bit of a distance away um, you know, they, they, they kind of blend in a little bit, but they don't necessarily pop that much as to where if I was to do maybe, I actually don't like this one, the scale. I mean, I do, I like it, but there's a couple other ones I love a little bit more. This one's a little bit easier. It's a little less complex. So for me, blue, I would go across here and see what pops. I think pink pops really nicely, but if you're looking for a super duper, 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 duper bright contrast, something that's just going to bam, be in your face. I would go with an orange and so basically in order to read one of these art color art wheels you would just look at the color that you have in mind say you wanted to use a pink background and then you would just literally go directly across and look at the colors I'd probably say about in the one-third range of the wheel or maybe even you could even push it as far as you know half the wheel um, so the colors on this side of the wheel are going to be the ones that stand out the most and vice versa so if you were picking a green you'd probably stay on this half of the wheel and these would be the colors that would stick out the most but of course the one that's direct Directly across, I hope this makes sense. I'm definitely not a school teacher. Um, is the one that is going to create the most pop. So for green, it's pink. For blue, it's orange. For purple, it's orange. Um, you know, and vice versa. So these are really helpful in creating thumbnails that are going to pop and that are going to be visually appealing on all platforms, whether it be computer, whether it be um, PC, whether it be well, that's the same damn thing. Don't know what I'm saying. I meant to say <laughs> whether it's. Um, um, whether it's uh, your 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 phone or mobile device or tablet or PC, you get what I'm saying. It's just gonna look visually uh, appealing on all platforms, um, if that makes sense. So. Alrighty, what else are we going to go and talk about? Okay, so let's just start kind of getting into creating a thumbnail with you guys. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pick a color. I like to look at my channel's aesthetic. I like to look and see kind of what I've got going on right now. I've kind of got a big melting, melting mosh pit of all different colors. Um, and it's not looking as seamless as I would like it. I'm very picky. But anyway, that's not the point. I got a lot of blues as of lately. So I'm thinking maybe something like a green or maybe we can even do like some sort of yellow, maybe even a pink. I don't know. We'll have to figure it out. So let's go look on my little color wheel here. Um, and we can, you could even, if you really wanted to, if you just, you want to cheat, you could go ahead and click print, print screen on your computer. Um, you could go and do new. And then you can just go ahead and paste this color wheel here. Grab your little paint daughter, or it's like an eyedropper tool, I guess. And you could go ahead and select the color of choice. It'll be in your little color finder. Um, remember, you're going to put the background on layer one. I just do this for, you know, good keeping. And then you're just going to hit your little paintbrush and bada bing, bada boom. There is your background. Now, if you don't really like this background, you could go ahead and juice it up a little bit. What I like to do is I like to play around with, um, I like to play around paint brushes. Uh, you can go and look through Google. You can look through Photoshop CC brushes. If you have a GIMP, I think you would look for GIMP brushes, but I believe they are compatible with Photoshop brushes. Don't quote me on that, but I think they are. Um, and then you can look at, you know, free Photoshop brushes. This is a really cool website, brushes.com, you know, forward slash brushes. They have a whole bunch of different types of, you know, textures and uh, different things like that that'll really help your, your photos. You know, we even have some bokeh brushes, all different sorts of things. And, um... I'll get into the vector and like different um, types of icons and stuff that you can actually download from Google as well. I'll get into that part in just a moment, but there are a lot of ways that you can shoosh up your backgrounds relatively easy and also for free. So for me personally, as you guys can tell, just from my backgrounds, I'm either doing some sort of starburst effect or I'm doing an ombre effect. But because the ombre effect, in my personal opinion, is more of a, you know, secret formulation to how I make my thumbnails, I'm probably not going to show you that part. A starburst is a freaking paint thingy. It's like a paintbrush. 
I don't own it, so I'm going to share it with you guys um, how to do that. So these are actually called the Rising Sun Brushes. Very easy to find on, on Google. Just type in Rising Sh Sun Brushes Photoshop CC. Um, and you're going to click the, I like this one, the 280, um, but it kind of has like this, like it's very centered, it's very balanced. I personally like it. These are also known as starbursts, I believe. Um, and then I would go and click another layer like we did. And I try to center it as much as possible. Um, and sometimes I like to take the photo of the sim first. But I'm just going to show you really quick what this looks like. Um, it's a little off center here, but that's totally okay. And then obviously you're not going to really want this stark white. You have a couple options. You could easily go into color um, overlay. You could even change the color, which obviously see how the blue plays against the, the pink, just like it says in this color wheel. I mean, you could literally see how cotton candy that this looks. Um, you can also go ahead and select the color of choice and then maybe drag down a little bit and play with the... Um, play with the color picker here and just stay in that same color category and just play with the intensity or you could do what i like to do i personally like to just keep it simple i like to go to this normal um this is basically in uh how do you say it's like a I don't know exactly what this tool is called, but I, I, it's right next to the opacity um, opacity marker. And then basically it has all these different things that it will do to your photo and how it will affect it. I like to use the overlay, which you can see it just lightens it a little bit. It's actually more of like a transparent, but it has like this very vibrant intensity to it. I use this a lot when I um, do things for my backgrounds, my photos and things like that. You know, I play with the paintbrushes. I play with other types of paintbrushes. I even play with just like these solid, um, solid uh, rounds here and then just kind of go with it. I mean, it's just a lot of experimenting. And then what I like to do to kind of blend it in furthermore is I play with this opacity and, you know, I can take it down to a 25, but I like to hover around the 49 range. And just depending on what you do with the background, this will look different. There's a whole bunch of things you could do um, and, and play around with. So I really do like to use those brushes. Another brush, I'm actually just going to go ahead and delete this one real fast and create another layer. Um, other brushes that I really like like, I mean, you can see all of my brushes here, all of them. Um, I really love the stars and uh, stars and blinks art share. Um, the reason why I like this is because these have a lot of different um, fun types of, of backgrounds. Like I really, I I use these a lot. Uh, what else do I use in these? Um, you know, maybe if you have your sim wearing jewelry, you need a little extra starburst bling, whatever that kind of thing. Those are really fun. Um, when adding different types of, you know, icons and things, I actually download my icons from the, uh, I don't remember what website it was, but let me go ahead and show you guys really quick. All right, so I kind of forgot where I left off, but anyway, um, as I was saying, you know how I get these icons in my um, thumbnails? Well, I went on Google and basically I typed in the Sims 4 icons, and you can get them from Honeywell, uh, Honeywell's Sims 4 blog, or you can go to Mod the Sims where you can actually download all the Sims 4 icon packs, and basically when you download download them they'll have a transparent background to them so all that you need to do is literally drag and drop um, in case you guys are interested so like it'll have a just a very very clear background and you won't need to do much all you'll need to do is just go ahead and drag them and you can literally put them on your photo or your thumbnail without having to crop any sort of background out I like to go ahead and save them to a specific designated folder on my hard drive and then I keep them for later use so in case you guys were wondering how I do that. So we'll get into that in just a minute, but I did want to show you guys um, how to incorporate some icons into your thumbnail. But naturally, I would wait until you had your sim, your 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 focus, and then I would add in, you know, your background or your your thing, you know, your thumbnails or not your thumbnails, but your icons and things like that. So with that said, I just wanted to show you, just keep it all, keep it all fluid. We are going to go ahead and do two things. We are going to take a photo of a sim in game, and we are also going to take a photo of a sim in cast. So naturally, we're in cast right now. We're with Adriana Pothuma, I think that's what her name is. I don't actually know her, her how to say her last name. 
But people sometimes have preferences with taking photos of their Sims in cast. I actually like to take my uh, photos of my Sims in game and you'll see why in just a minute. Then we're also going to go ahead and show you guys, we, <laughs> hello, hey, me, myself and I over here, uh, how to edit out the background and create more of a fluid, um, a fluid line around the sim so it's not like all janky and wobbly and yes yes let it all begin the wild works of my neighbors outside mowing their invisible lawn like i must be freaking blind um so please do ignore this because I'm, I'm trying really hard here so all right what you're going to need to do personally is you're going to need to have some sort of poses in your game you don't need to have any specific pose I guess you could use easily like just the randomized traits like just how you could do it here like how they um, start moving in and with every specific trait that they have or for me personally I've actually downloaded poses that replace the traits and they'll start voguing and do their thing. Um, and, and doing this, you literally just look up like poses on the on Google and some of them will replace as traits. Some will be for the pose player, um, Andrew's pose player, which I'll all have links down below and stuff to that so you guys can check it out if you want to do poses for your Sims. Otherwise, you could literally just use like the default animations. But um, I personally prefer like specific poses. I feel like you have more control that way. So what I like to do is I like to, obviously get my sim dressed accordingly so if say we used a blue background I would probably use a pink top um I think for us today I don't know if we will use the pink I mean I guess I could use the pink background I actually kind of like this background so for me personally again I would go back to my color wheel and I would look and I'd probably put her in either a green or some sort of blue um, and I really do like her darker features. I think black pops a lot. So I'll probably leave like her black hair and her black earrings. Uh, let's just see if we find anything that I think would stand out nicely against the background. Uh, any sort of blue. I think this one would stand out like a ton. Uh, I do believe I have something a little more. Okay, this one would be really pretty. This one would be more of a darker shade of blue. I'm not exactly sure how this would pop out, but we can go ahead and test it out. Also, keeping um, keeping note that you probably don't want a shirt that resembles your background. So if you have like a default background, try not to put a shirt on your sim that literally blends in. Otherwise, you're gonna have one hell of a fun time cropping out the background. Just a little, just a little quick note. So I'm gonna go look through my poses here. I don't know exactly which ones have what. I think Clumsy has something. Okay, there's Clumsy. So what I like to do is I like to get up close and personal with my sim and then I hit the C button and it goes into my screenshot folder. Um, and then I always take a couple because not every single one is going to turn out well. I even play with how close I get with the sim. It just kind of depends. And this is why I like taking photos in game. I feel like you have so much more um, self-control. Another thing I like to focus on too is how my makeup looks on my sims, um, you know, depending on the background that I'm using. And then also I like to, anything that's going to be in focus um, in the shot, I like to make sure that the details are there. So she even has her, her, um, <laughs> she has no pants on, but she has her nails painted just in case, you know, we get a shot where her, her hands are in the frame. So I'm going to try to do this lazy pose real fast. Sorry if I get a little distracted. I'm not trying to be um, distracted. It's just hard when you have your neighbors doing whatever they're doing. So I got a couple photos here. I'm just going to go ahead and minimize this a little bit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and right click and hit screenshots. Okay, we are in the pancake household. So here are some of the photos that we took in game. I like to get to the ones that have the most detail. So for me, either this one or this one's actually perfect. Uh, to get the photo in game, I wanna make sure that my screen is at its maximum resolution. I go ahead and click print screen on the keyboard. I don't drag and drop. If I was to drag and drop, it just, I lose some of the quality for some reason in, in the thumbnail. And I'm all about, you want the highest resolution, you want the highest quality you could possibly have. Not to mention if you guys are wondering why your game in game isn't you know um as up to par or whatever 
Um, maybe you don't have as good as graphics as I do, and that's totally okay. This is why Photoshop's like your best friend. Um, but these are my graphic settings. I do have a very high performance computer for the sake of me doing LPs. Um, so I do need something like that. But if you don't, don't worry. There are ways to actually take very low res photos. I could do a whole different tutorial on that. Um, and, and make them a little bit better. But either way, I'll show you how to do that in Photoshop. So no matter which side of the street you're on, um, hopefully it, this will this will work out for you either way. So here we are, we are moving around our photo. As you can see, it started on a brand new layer. I like to drag it, um, well, where is it? I like to kind of position where I would like to have my sim. So I could even do it really up close. Like if I was showing her makeup shot, this is exactly what I do. But I go into edit, I go into free, transform, or control T, and then you're going to start getting like this little perimeter. Okay, so if you were to just grab your mouse and grab this little right hand, uh, right hand button and just start dragging, you're going to notice that your sim is going to get all super freaking duper wonky. Like, ew, right? It's going to be so hard for you to like get a good picture. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of that there. Um, I'm going to show you how to keep your your, your uh, resolution and, and your um, dimensions without losing any of that quality there. So we're going to do the free transform again. We're going to go back into that right hand square. Press shift on your keyboard and then click your mouse and drag in. As you guys can see, the frame is locked. She's not going anywhere. She's only going um, horizontally, like downscaling, but she's not getting warped or anything. Hopefully I described that properly. Um, so I like to just kind of position her. To how she's getting you know how she's going to be in, in the thumbnail i like this also i really highly suggest if you do do thumbnails even if your sims aren't wearing these clothing it's totally fine or these items do maxis match for the love of god do maxis match you'll have cleaner lines there'll be less cleanup and you won't have to worry about sitting here until you know next christmas trying to crop out all the little white lines or background lines or any of that jazz okay so for me you're you're gonna notice <laughs> in this thumbnail there's going to be very little cleanup Okay, so now how do we get rid of this BS and show that pretty pink background that we chose earlier? You're going to go over here to your color wand. You're going to right click on your mouse. You're going to hit the quick selection tool. So there's a plus sign and there's a minus sign. Believe me, I just realized now what these two do. Mm -hmm. And life has never been easier. So what I like to do is I like to start with the paintbrush with the plus sign. Um, and it says add to selection. So you're going to select the parts of the background or the parts of the image you want to cut out. And you're going to drag your paintbrush until it snaps into place. Um, sometimes it accidentally, say it hits this. <gasps> oh no, you don't, if you do this, <laughs> you got the headless horseman syndrome. So we're gonna do undo clear and we're gonna come over here with this little paintbrush doodad and we're gonna subtract from selection, meaning you are going to go ahead and put back um, these parts of the images so that they don't get cut out from the photo. Does that make sense? Okay, so just make sure you get everything here. I like to set mine to about one pixel. I feel like I have better control. I also zoom in a lot too, especially for very intricate pieces. You need to be in as close as possible. So once you are confident in your selection, you just hit the delete key, uh, delete key on your keyboard and then you right click and hit deselect. Bingo. So we're halfway done. Go ahead and repeat. Do the same to the other side. Hit delete, bada bing, bada boom. But we're not done yet. So you can notice that we kind of have janky lines just a little bit. And our sim isn't as crisp and, you know, you know, super like high def as, you know, maybe we would want, right? Okay, so this is kind of when I personally um, start playing with the background a little bit, just kind of bringing that out. And you don't have to, but this is what I do. I'll go in here and just for the sake of this tutorial, um, I'll go and I'll play with this rising sun. Um, I'm going to start a new layer and then I'm going to try to put it like right in the middle. If not, it doesn't matter. Sometimes I like to position see like, oh, that's actually perfect because it's coming from behind her head. Um, and then I, I look and I see how it looks with my sim. I like it. It's cool. And then we're going to go and uh, for the rising sun, we are going to select overlay and we are going to go ahead and lighten that up a bit. Um, so for the background, personally, I would like to bring in more light. I would like to bring in more color. I would like to bring in more ish. Now, I'm not going to tell you exactly how I do it because that's like giving you the key to my success here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But I like to play with just the basic the basic brushes. I really do. Um, you, the harder you drag this, so if you do 100% hardness, the more 
clear and concise circle you're going to get, which I guess could work for some people. But for me personally, I like to drag it down a little bit and then you get kind of this very feathery circle, which if you play around a little bit, ooh, 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 there's your light. So do with it what you will. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up this background and I will see you in just a second. Okay, so now that I've kind of got my background um, all set up and I really do like how the way that this looks, I really love how there's more contrast now than there was before and that kind of thing, we can go ahead and move on to the sim. And this is literally the order that I do it in. It may be a little bit jumping around, you can do it however it works for you, but this is just how I do it. So now we're gonna go and we're gonna kind of clean up the edges of the sim, depending on how well your you cut cleaned it up the first time, that's gonna determine on how much you have to do now. So we're gonna go over here, we're gonna hit the magic wand tool in the same sector as the quick selection tool, hit magic wand. We're gonna click the background of the photo and you're gonna see it's kind of like, you know, outlining our sim here. We're gonna go over to select introverse and we are going to go ahead and hit add layer mask. This is what it's supposed to, there we go. And then you're gonna see that there's almost like the silhouette of your sim. This is the absolute freaking money maker. Do this anytime you crop out a sim. Do this anytime that you need to crop out an item from a background, even in just, you know, YouTube scenarios. If you take a photo of yourself even, you could use this technique and um, use the takeaway and add with the selection tool and be able to actually create a really cool design. Um, so next, to get more of a cleaner edge without this jankiness, we like to go into the filter blur sector, and I'm going into Gossam Blur, and you can notice immediately. Do you see that? How softened it becomes? Right? Levels. So you do need to play with the radius. This is actually going to determine um, how how soft it is or how, you know, transparent or whatever. Um, it all just depends on, like I said, how much of that correction that you need. I actually feel like my sim could stay around a 2.0 and be completely fine. However, I did really like how that 2.8 looked. You're going to notice, don't just ignore this little white. My my game, my my program is being a weirdo, but um, this won't happen to you, hopefully. Um, but typically, you'll notice that there's going to be start. There's going to be a little bit of the background peeking through down here. I'm gonna show you guys how to correct that in a minute when we're all finished. Don't freak out. It is correctable, even though I didn't know that for like the longest time. All right. So now that we have this, if you still need more correction, you have maybe some white around your sim or just these little, you know, little little specks of. Uh, um, you know, just ickiness that you don't like anymore. I don't know. You can actually go, make sure that you stay on this layer though. You have to click the layer mask thumbnail. Like you have to, if you click this, then it's going to control your sim or your photo in question. But if you click the layer mask, this is going to control the border around your image. So then next, just to kind of, you know, um, correct it further, you go to brightness and contrast. As you can see, it kind of takes away even furthermore or it adds, it does whatever you need it to do. So I think honestly, just from you know my visual standpoint, this looks pretty damn spiffy. I don't need to add or take away anymore, but that's just me. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on my sim and we are going to start changing up her looks. So just a couple of little key tips and tricks and how I like to do things. First and foremost, I like to go to adjustments. I like to play with the brightness and contrast. It all depends on your sim's complexion. It all depends on your background. It all just depends on the theme, the style, and all that that you're going for. Sometimes you'll need more brightness, sometimes you'll need less. It just kind of depends. For me personally, I feel like around a 21 is pretty good for her. Um, I could even bump up the contrast to about a 3. See if I bump it up, it just brings more pigmentation to the skin, more saturation. Um, and then if you need to kind of, you know, go the other way, you can also make it look more realistic, in my personal opinion, by taking away some of that contrast. It's all up to you. So I really do like around um, maybe like the two range on her. Um, and then next, what I want to do is I like to go to adjustments. I like to go to vibrance. I can even take away some of that color just a little bit. I'm giving her more of a realistic complexion. And then I can even bump up some of that contrast. So if there's more vibrance there, but you're not getting that, or saturation rather, you're not getting that super duper duper like orange peel effect. Do you get what I'm saying? It's just, it, it's just little details, guys. You gotta play with these three settings. I feel like these three settings are absolute freaking key, okay? So now that we've got that down, we are ready to go ahead and do um, something a little extra. 
Uh, we are going to go move on to the sharpen. This is really what brings your Sims to life. This is really what gives my Sims the high quality um, appearance that they have. So I like to go into smart sharpen and I like to play with the sharpen settings. Just for the sake of this tutorial, I am keeping my specific settings private because they took a long time to master and I feel like they're very, um, they're very traditional to my thumbnail prototype my style so I feel like you need to play around and see what works for you but this is my kind of result that works for me I'm going to share I'm getting really close with sharing to you guys how I master what I master but I'm also not going to share everything with you because at the end of the day um, I do need to keep some things to myself you know okay so if you guys can see over here you can definitely see the difference this is the before this is after wait this is after, okay. This is before, this is after, before, after. Do you see how much of a difference that makes? Huge difference, huge. So if you wanted to add, see so you had a sim with a little darker complexion. If you really wanted to add a little more highlight, a little more dimension to her, go to the filter gallery. Um, and you're gonna go and make sure that you have the white portion down to the bottom here, otherwise it's gonna look weird. Uh, go to the filter gallery and you can actually play with this um, diffuse glow and play with the glow amount and depending on how, how much you want her to glow up, that's basically what the result will be. I like around a two for her. She has a very fairly light um, complexion. So the lighter the sim, the less she'll need and that kind of thing. And also, by the way, if you have a really light background, it actually makes your background white. So just a little, a little extra tip there. And we're gonna go ahead and click okay. So the very last detail that, well, I mean, there is another extra step. So if you wanted to, and I do this actually Actually, to be 100% honest with you, I do this in, in my, my Instagram photos. <laughs> um, sharpening. If you wanted to have more focus on certain aspects of your Sims face to create, you know, more crispness, more high quality, and just to give the illusion that you have, you know, more high definition, um, go to the, I think it's going to show you the smudge or the blur tool, but it's going to be right under this little paint thingy here. Um, and then you're going to hit sharpen tool. Um, I'm on strength 50% play with this because obviously the higher you have it, the more intense of the sharpening you're going to get and vice versa. I'm playing with the 13 right now, but I can't see because the preview is being silly. Um, uh, you need to play with that too. So what I like to do sometimes if I feel like my sims need it, I like to just go and hover like over their eyebrows to give them a little more high definition. See that right there? It's really pretty. I also like to go over the eyes. You can just see how much of a difference that makes. And then sometimes if I really wanted to, I'll just go over like the, the, the base of the nose and then also I'll go over the labios, you see? And then if I want maybe a little more high definition or earrings or whatever the situation is, you can just kind of tell right there um, the difference. I wish I could show you what it looked like before, but I assure you, I've been doing this a long time, there's a difference. So another way to kind of make your sim stand out from the background, um, we can also go ahead and click um, the double click the sim here like this and you're going to get a whole bunch of different options um I, there's a way to like add a border to your sims i guess i could show you guys i mean you can literally click the stroke button and add it i mean there's so many different ways i could show you how to do tutorials on your sims i'm trying to be as concise as possible but if you wanted to add a border this is one way to do it but i honestly unless you have like a super duper 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 clean um sim i mean it looks good right it doesn't look too bad uh, I wouldn't do it this way. That's just me, personally. If you're going to add a border, I'm going to show you guys really, 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 really quick, okay? Because I really want to be thorough with you. Um, and this is how I do it. So you're going to go ahead and you are going to go and you're going to press the shift key, I think. And then you're going to push the thumbnail of your sim. Or is it the shift? Okay, no, I'm sorry. It's actually the control button. And then you're going to you're gonna right uh, left click on your Sims icon there, and you're gonna get this little this little guy here, basically the out border or whatever. Basically, I think you could just do it the same way that you did earlier with the wand, but I like to do control and then click the image that I'm trying to do the border around. Okay, so next I would go to my paintbrush tool. Um, I'm gonna go over here. Where am I gonna go? I'm gonna click these little paintbrushes right here next to the 100 sign. I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna basically get a let me see. Can I reset the brushes? I might actually have to reset the brushes really quick or no. Okay. I'm going to click a basic circle. 
I'm gonna put my sizing down to about 12, okay? Uh, my hardness, I'm gonna do to 100, and my spacing, I'm gonna make sure it's at zero to 1%. I prefer 0%, so you may actually have to manually enter that in there. So once you have that, that is basically, okay, well, fine. All right, it has to be 1%. That is basically going to be the width of your border around your sim. Next, all you're gonna do, is you're gonna go over here and you are going to create new layer, okay? And you're gonna go to path, and you're gonna go and click this guy right here. Where, uh, what does it say? Make work path from selection. There we go. Sorry, I got a little confused for a second. And once you have that, it's gonna show your work path. You're gonna go back to the layer of where your, um, your, uh, I guess you could say border or stroke or whatever it's called is going to be. And you're going to right click for reels this time. You're going to click fill path. Um, you could do color or you could do white. I'm gonna do white because that's the color of the border I want. Then it's going to fill your sim and then you're gonna go back again, right click and click stroke path and you're gonna hit brush. The presets that we applied to the brush earlier are what's going to affect the, um, the stroke path on your sim. You're gonna click OK, um, but you gotta make sure, <laughs> you gotta make sure that your color is selected there, sister, so just make sure that you, whatever color you want that stroke to be, it's, it's, in the, it's the first color in the window. Now, go ahead and click Stroke Path again. All right, so now that we have that, it looks pretty good. You're gonna right click and hit Delete Path. Okay, so it's covering your sim. All you need to do is just drag it and put it underneath your sim, and voila! <laughs> that is what that looks like. And now when you go and you create like a, a drop shadow behind it or whatever, it's not going to be competing against that stroke. Does that make sense? So that is how I add my um, my borders around my sims. Sure. Okay. And if you want to get rid of it, you can just do that. Or if you want to even change the color, you just go and double click on it. Um, it will open up this panel and you can hit clo color overlay. Uh, you could even do like a gradient or whatever you want it to do. You could have fun with it. Okay. So there's that. Um, but for me personally, I've been just really loving the simplicity of just a basic, you know, drop background. Um, or I like to do an outer glow, which I think is really nice. Like I said earlier, you guys can do that and it just kind of blends in your sim to the background a little bit more. It's just more clean looking. I feel like, again, going back to that whole, you know, less is more thing. Um, I feel like that is really, really important. So as you can see, when we are playing with that, the glow kind of comes up here. So I need to show you guys how to correct that. So you're gonna click the image of your um, thumbnail, thumbnail layer mask of your sim. Hop over to the eraser tool and all that you need to do is just go along the bottom there and basically wherever your sim meets the edge. Um, and then you just erase it and then there you go. You don't have those lines anymore. And bada bing, bada boom. Um, and again, with the whole adding in, let me go and see if I can show you guys, adding in, you know, some sort of image. You can just make sure it has like a transparent background to it. You can bring it in and you can just play around with it a little bit and then you can hit place. Um, and you can also just do like the drop shadow or an outer glow, whatever you want to do when it comes to adding in different types of, um, different types of images. So when it comes to injectors. adding fonts and stuff, we're really just going to talk about this so super duper briefly. The whole color wheel thing applies most definitely. So let me just go back to our color wheels really quick. And you can tell that we have a pink background. We've got some blue in there. So for me personally, I think the most logical you know, color option would probably be an orange or even a yellow. That is just me personally. So all that you do to get some text on your thumbnail is you go ahead and click the little T-bar. You just drag it in there and you start typing away. Um, so for me, if I was to actually put in a thumbnail here, I would probably put in, you know, thumb nail and then I would have some other like cool font underneath thumbnail like again it, thumb, like doing some sort of like text or whatever it's all personal preference but I would probably put it like right here so you could still see the sim um, I did say I was gonna do like yellow so there we go there's like a yellow preset that I have and I highly suggest um, if you do come up with like some sort of style that you love and you want it to be very consistent just saving it so all that you need to do to save a specific style 
I'm just going to go ahead and show you. I don't want to show you that one. Uh, you just click new style and then you would just name the style and hit OK. So and then you can save it for later and click it anytime that you want to use it. Uh, so I would do that um, if it was me. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, God, there we go again. Uh, let me just go ahead and, and move that. And then underneath, I would probably either do uh, maybe a orange or a green or maybe even a white. So I could do like tutorial. I also play with caps you know, regular, all different sorts of stuff. If you guys are wondering what font that is, it just shows up there. Um, so there we go. And then I'm just going to scale this beast down. Again, trying to keep in mind what you guys are going to see on, you know, the small mobile devices and tablets and stuff like that. I would actually probably make the thumbnail portion a little bit bigger. Um, but I just go over here and play with some of my presets that I have. And that's kind of what it looks like if you were to add in a, um, a font of some kind. So that's just me. That's probably how I would do it. Um, you obviously, depending on what your image looks like, you could play with that a lot. If you're looking for free fonts and things, just look on, just look on uh, Google. That's my, like, that's your best friend. And when it comes to creating new um, types of fonts and different styles to those fonts, you could easily just click and play with these. I, I this is this is what I played with this one. I played with the stroke, the color overlay, the drop shadow, and the bevel and emboss to get that kind of 3D. Um, more of a clean cartoony effect and you can kind of see like the preview sample right there of what your image is going to look like so just play around with the the options um it's easy to get into them you just double click your image uh go to fx show all images and there's just a million different things that you could play with in here to make your um fonts and and, and lettering look really cool and unique I can't even believe I almost forgot. I do this every time. Like this is the second time me filming this freaking tutorial and I literally forget to show you guys the in-game version every single time. So with the help of Andrew's Pose Player, which I will link down below, and also the help of my handy dandy photo cube, which you can actually download on my gallery, Gen2606. It's literally called the Photo Cube. Um, it does not have any CC, even though that it says it does. So just make sure that when you're looking for it on my gallery, you do have the Include Custom Content checked under the Advanced tab. All that this is is a controlled environment, no matter or night and day um, where you can actually even like add a couple of these together and create a stage almost and add props and all sorts of different stuff. I, I, I constantly use like different um, different objects to get certain animations. You really do need to get creative when it comes to this sort of thing. Uh, so for me personally, this is what I use and I use this so freaking much. It's the easiest way for me to take photos. Um, I usually have another sim just kind of in, in the game uh, so that I can take the thumbnail or not the thumbnail, but the plum bob away from the the uh, the the star sim, the sim that we're gonna that's gonna be doing all the modeling. And all that I do is I uh, just go ahead. I'm gonna lock the door for everyone, but uh huh, her, whatever. There's like two of them right now. And then I'm gonna have her go ahead and come inside. And I'll show you guys how I take the photo. So this photo cube is base game friendly, except for the floor. You'll need spa day stuff, but any white flooring will do fine. So you could probably download one from like, you know, the Sims resources, something like that. So once I get her into position, um, because I do have the Andrews, uh, the, the pose player um, installed, I can click on her and click pose by plat pack <laughs> black that too okay uh, and there's a whole bunch here i do have more but they're like in a separate folder that i only install for certain times i don't know i should probably just integrate them all together but i'm gonna go and look through my poses here and try to find one that i like this is really hard for me to see but i'm gonna try this one and just to see what it looks like Ooh, sassafras okay i don't really like that one too much so i'm gonna go ahead and click another uh i kind of of. I feel like these are the ones that we did in game. Some of these are actually in game and you can even go with the pose player by the way and um, there we go. That's not too bad. But you can even go with the pose player and pick the ones via traits that you installed and, and they'll show up basically in cast and in game. Kind of cool. Uh, let me see if there's anything else that I have because I'm not really sure how I'm liking those poses. Like I don't dislike this one but it's like not my favorite to be honest. Okay. Here we go. So this is what I'm talking about by having, you know, everything in importance by frame. So I feel like you just have a better control when it comes to in-game um, 
you know, photo, photo taking here. Uh, you can get really up close and personal. Like, I mean, there's really no limit to how close you can get depending on what it is you're trying to show. Um, this is really good for casts and things like that. So I feel like kind of sticking around this area would be really, really, really ideal for me. I'm probably going to go right there. I'm going to hit the C button on my keyboard and, um, you can play with the lights and stuff. I mean, you can change the colors. There's just a whole bunch more I feel like you can do in game, but again, it's all personal preference. That's why I'm showing you both options. Go to screenshots and you can immediately tell the difference between, you know, in game and or in game <laughs> and cast in game and cast in game and cast. OK, so we're going to go with the in game one. I'm going to go in a right click, hit preview, print screen, and then we're going to go and edit paste. Bingo. Go back to edit free transform shift button scale in and then I'm going to try to like get her in as much as possible so like right about there I think looks pretty good it's pretty balanced looks nice so now that we have this we're going to basically do the same exact cropping technique that I showed you guys earlier and as you can see because of the white background there is just a little bit of a little bit of over exaggeration that's happening here so we're gonna make sure that we hit that minus there and just keep her fingers intact <laughs> and then hit the delete and right click deselect now we're gonna do the exact same thing for the other side bingo looks pretty good to me so the only real thing now that I feel like I would need to do personally is probably play with the um, the saturation sharpness and all that other stuff that I showed you guys earlier so I'm just gonna do the work and I'm gonna just be kind of quiet real quick and you guys are gonna see how I how I um, how I uh, how I function here. So this one is definitely a little more brighter. So with that, I would play, play down the contrast a bit. Sometimes with this kind of a situation, I would literally jump straight to, uh, to the smart sharpen and just literally cut to the chase. I got that. Um, looks really good. I actually kind of like this. And then I can go over to the vibrance or, and then just play with that a little bit. If I want to add some more color to her face, if I want to do a little more saturation or less saturation, like I said, it's all about what works for you and, um, and playing around. So now that I have that, I really like the way that this turned out. I'm going to go with, um, just hypothetically seeing what the, the glow looks like, um, with this one, because it is a white background and it's more of a just brighter environment. I think I'd probably stick with a one see the difference like between a one and a two it's a huge difference so now that we have this I'm actually going to hit the magic wand tool go over to um, the select introverse creating that layer mask uh, I do this so fast now like I literally do this like it's the back of my hand go to the Gossam blur I think around a 2.8 looks pretty damn good on her too perfect um, and I really don't think there's much else for me to do here other than I would probably, like I said, clean up these edges. You can clean up the edges at any point in time, like if you know where they're going to appear. But sometimes I just like to wait until I know exactly where they're located at. Um, and then all that I do then is just go ahead and add like a drop shadow or in this case, a glow. Oh my goodness. Did I do this wrong? Did I do this wrong? I think I did this wrong because what's happening here, if you guys can see, it's completely outer glowing everything and you don't want that no 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 um so i might actually need to go and make sure that i'm clicking on the right okay no for some reason we are having an issue houston so if this happens i can just go ahead and hit introverse again um and then maybe try just from directly there let me see that is weird okay well i don't know why i'm having a problem now like go figure but um let's try this again oh my god that is so weird well i mean it really doesn't bother me because if that does happen to you for some reason it shouldn't like if you follow my tutorial correctly <laughs> um you can just go ahead and like erase this see and just erase that side and then you're totally fine you don't have to worry about it it's just again it's just easier if you don't have to do this but if you do end up get i guess this is kind of good because if this does end up happening to you i probably just messed it up a little bit then just go ahead and grab your eraser tool and erase those little pieces and you're good to go so the last final touch is just to match up the other one that we did there 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and kind of add in um, some sharpness just to the eyebrows. As you can see the difference, it just kind of brings the photo more to life. And I'm going to do the eyes and her nose and then her lips, um, her fingers since that's kind of in focus, and then also her earrings. I can even do like the details of her ears if I wanted. Um, do this one over here. And then you can kind of see the difference between in-game and cast. In-game and cast. So basically in the uh, comments down below, you can let me know what your favorite version is. And again, it all is dependent on how you edit your photo. But I personally feel like I get more of a softer effect with the in-game. But if I want something a little more, you know, crisp and concise and just a little more high def, I feel like, yeah, maybe maybe the, uh, the in-game or the cast option might be a little more logical for some people. So it just depends on personal preference. It depends on what kind of, you know, thumbnail style you're going for. It literally all depends on you. To save so, it, all that you need to do is you need to go ahead and right click on your image. You hit flatten image. Um, it's going to say discard hidden layers. You're going to go ahead and say yes. Then after that, you're going to hit uh, file, save as, then you're going to make sure it's saved as a PNG file. And then I'm just going to go and do like, you know, some random name and click save. So once it you hit the save button, there's another window that's going to go ahead and pop up. And once it pops up, it's going to show you the PNG options. I personally like to do compression, um, smallest, slow, and then interlaced. I mean, you can do either. It doesn't really matter. Um, or if you want to do no compression, I think that actually might even be better. I don't, it just play with the compression, but I just make sure I say interlaced. Um, I don't know. I don't really know what it does personally, but these are just kind of like what I stick with. I stick with the smallest and slow, and then I stick with the um, interlaced option, and it seems to work out for me. And that is how you create thumbnails. So with that said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to give this video a big fat thumbs up and let me know in the comments where the sun doesn't shine. And I will see you guys all next time. Bye.